Hey, what's going on guys? Rockstar Flipper here on a weekend for you guys and I have a heavily requested video from people that want to learn A, how to do accounting better and get ready for their taxes, possibly from last year. But really, I think this video is going to be targeting people who want to do 2018 correctly and who want to set up an accounting program that's more than just a pad of paper or maybe even a basic spreadsheet um, to officially use a program. So there are two that I recommend. One is GoDaddy accounting, which is a lot of people use that. It's it's recommended. Uh, even Megan Reed uses it. Um, but I use Intuit QuickBooks. And this is the Intuit QuickBooks online edition. And I just renewed this so I can tell you exactly how much it costs. It costs $150 for one year. So you guys can do the math on that. I mean, it's like what, 13 or 12 or $13 a year, 12 to 13 bucks a year or a month. I'm sorry. So not bad at all. 12, 13 bucks a month. Um, you get this full access to this online. And then, um, there it goes, sign me out. And then you also get an app. Uh, the app is exactly the same. It's a little mobile style, but it um, it works very well if you want to put something in on the run. I don't use it all that much, but the app is nice to have. You can check on stuff right where you're you know, out and about or whatever, see where you're at. It's not, uh, it's not too hard to use, and uh, it looks just like the online um, version of it. So let's take a look at QuickBooks. Let me show you how this is set up. Now, there are a few different ways you can do it, but... This is basically the way that I do it. So I've just started using my QuickBooks. I had to get the renewal up. It took them like a day or two. Something got screwed up. Uh, the debit card I had on file has since changed because I paid for this last January. And sometime this year, my uh, debit card got a security breach. And so they replaced it. Nothing happened, but they gave me a new card. So the card number I had on file uh, did not process. They tried to process it. Of course, it didn't work. So they had to call me and get the new debit card number to pay for this. So it took a couple of days. So... Um, and they weren't, uh, open on the first, so they weren't open till the second. They didn't get a hold of me till the third. So I haven't got a chance to put all of my, um, sales and expenses in from this year. I did like the first and the second, I think this is the first two days or possibly the first three days I put in there or part of it. So, um, essentially there's three things you'll need to know about QuickBooks, uh, to make it very easy to use. So there's a slot for your sales. There's a slot for your expenses and there's a slot for like your accounts and banking and things that are attached. And I'm going to show you each one of these. QuickBooks can also do payroll for you, which is really, really valuable. It's about 100 bucks total a month. So you're going to pay an extra $85 a month. But they will handle all of your paychecks, payrolls, uh, employees, direct deposits. They can do all of that for $100 a month. So um, if that's an option that you want or need, you can also call them about the payroll services. Very, very um, clean and very, very easy to use. And they take care of everything, including W-2s. They take care of reemployment tax. Uh, they take care of the state tax. They, they can do everything. So something else to consider if you get QuickBooks. So let's start here. Left-hand side is your dashboard. This is your main screen. This is like your home screen. It is going to show your left-hand side invoices. So your invoices is basically if you have like receivables. Um, this doesn't really qualify too much for eBay and Amazon sellers because when you sell something, you get paid right away. But if you were in the business of selling things and getting paid down the road, you could invoice and you can send the invoices to folks uh, in an email. And it will tell you if you have any unpaids. Now down here, you can see that I have $1,355 in invoices that have been paid. So what I do is when I sell things on eBay, I don't do every single item into QuickBooks as a sale because it would just take a long time to input you know, 20, 30 items a day. Um, it wouldn't be horrible, but what if you got up to selling 50 or 60 or 100 items a day? It'd probably be a lot of work. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just go to sales. You can click the sales button. And then over here, you can click new transaction and you can click invoice. And so the invoice screen is going to bring this up. And this is what you would do. At the end of every day, I go into my eBay sold screen, my sold, my paid and ships, the items that were actually paid on eBay that day. And I will choose a customer, which is eBay. You can save this in as eBay sales. You can do an email if you want, but I don't do an email. My eBay sales are due on receipt. They're due right away. So if I was putting in today's sales, it would be 1-6-2018, 1-6-2018. You can come down here and do product and services, which would be sales. Now, they have a whole list of, of items here that you could do, but discount, if it was labor, rental income, this is just sales. 
And then I type in 1-6-2018 eBay sales. And then let's say that I sold, I sold um, $215 today. Ooh. Oh, we got it up. $215. And then there it is. You only need quantity one because you did one day's worth of sales. You could certainly input every single item into this into this invoice. And some people do. I just don't. And the reason I don't is if I ever was involved in an audit from the IRS, I save all of my eBay sales. I go to my my eBay's to my paid in ships at the end of each month and I export them to a CSV Excel file. And so if the IRS called me and said, "Hey, we need to audit you. Uh let's see your sales from 1/6/2018." Well, I could pull up this QuickBooks and show that I did 215. And then I could open the spreadsheet that I've exported from eBay and scroll down to the 1-6 and show every item that I sold on that day. So I have those two things to match up with because even if I took that information from eBay and I inputted it individually into this line by line by line, they're still going to want proof of where the sales come from because anybody can click on QuickBooks and create sales. You could fabricate these sales with nobody's business. They're going to want you to actually pull the eBay thing. So I figure it's easier just to put one line sales for each day in. And some people do it for a whole week. I do it for each day. It's quick. It's easy. It takes five minutes. Um, and then I have the backup spreadsheet as proof that's been exported from eBay as a spreadsheet to show them, you know, as the evidence of here's where the $215 came from. So then you would just save this and I'm not going to do it right now, but you would save this. And once you save it, you're going to come back. Whoop, let's go ahead and save it. Hold on. Okay. I saved it. That's fine. Okay. So now I've saved it and now we're going to go back to our dashboard. And now do you see that the top now says I have $215 in unpaid? Do you see that? So you have to actually click on that. You have to select the eBay sales and click receive payment. So down here at the bottom, You'll hit save and this will receive the payment for 215 and then it will go into i'm going to show you guys it will go into the actual paid section of your dashboard that would add the 215 here i'm not going to do that now because i didn't do 215 today i have no idea how much i've done today but that's how you would do it very very easy so sales invoice and then save it and then click it again and hit receive payment and it will move it here to your deposited amount now, expenses kind of work the same way, but they have a lot of different categories. So let's go to expenses. And so I do this exactly the same way. If I go out to a store and I buy merchandise, if I buy Salvation Army or, and here's a great example. Here's a Salvation Army purchase I just did on the third and it cost me $17, $16.95. So that was a cost of goods sold. It will be a cost of goods sold eventually, but right now it's just in the cost of gold, goods sold section. So if you click on that, here it is. I bought shoes and clothing at half off day, a little description. I chose cost of goods sold. Now here's all the expenses that they give you. Cost of labor, freight and delivery, purchases. You could put it under purchases instead of cost of goods sold. A lot of people do that. Because of how I do my accounting, I just choose cost of goods sold. Um, subcontractor, supply and material. There's all these different um, categories to put your expenses. Um, utilities, travel meals, travel tools, taxes and license, supplies. So you just select the correct category that your item goes in. Office expenses, insurance if you pay for that, bank charges, anything that you have advertising that would be business cards, billboards, t-shirts, whatever. Select the right category. Type your little description. Put your date up here. How did you pay for it? I used my PayPal card. I always use my PayPal card to use the money out of um, my account. And then the amount. And then that's it. You'll just hit save or save a new if you want to make a new one. And that saves that as an expense of $16.95 cost of goods sold. Now the next one, what I do for my eBay and PayPal fees is the same thing I do for my eBay sales. I will, at the end of each day, I'm always working on yesterdays. And the reason I work on yesterday is so that I can know the final number of the sales fees, etc. So I will go to my eBay fee screen, my eBay account summary and fees, and I will get the date, you know, 1-6 or 1-3, whatever day you're working on, and I will find out what the total fees were. That's insertion fees, uh, list, uh, final value fees, uh, promoted ad fees, any fees that I incurred that day from eBay will go in 
as eBay fees. And so those are commissions and fees. That's where they go in my section. And see, so here's eBay fees daily, final value fee, add an insertion. I paid $25.82 that day. And so that is an expense. So let me close this. And then same for PayPal. I go to PayPal and I total up all the PayPal fees that came out of those sales. And I add those as a fee. I also do the shipping labels. I go to the shipping label screen and I total up all the labels I purchased on that date. And you can get that total out of PayPal or off of the eBay shipping screen, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> so those go in as my, ex my expenses. So I have three expenses, eBay fee, PayPal fee, shipping labels each day, and one sale invoice each day for eBay, and one sale invoice each day for Amazon, and also my fees for Amazon. So you would do the same thing if you are selling on Amazon. Then if you go out to the stores or you source from anywhere, you buy a wholesale lot, whatever day you pay for that item, like this Salvation Army, you insert that as an expense, cost of goods or cost of purchases or however you want to do it. If you go to the store and you buy bubble wrap today, you would insert that as an expense and you would choose office supplies or packing material. I think there's a packing material category and that's how you would insert it. And so that's very, very easy. And then when you come back to your dashboard, you will see how you have an expense total that pie charts it. My shipping and delivery expenses are at 267. My commissions and fees are at 106. And my cost of goods sold are at $17. Underneath of it, it's gonna give you profit loss. I've done $1,355 sales through three days with $390 expenses for a $965 profit in three days. Over here is total sales. You can sort it by dates, by months, doesn't matter. And then you can link, a lot of people link their bank accounts, which just have you sign directly into your bank account. And then it just updates the, uh, the balances. I don't do that because the amount of money that's in my bank account doesn't really matter to me um, in the accounting side of it. All I wanna know is what were my sales, my expenses, my profit. How much is in my bank account and how much comes in and out of it is just, it's inconsequential because my accounting is all that matters when I report to the IRS. They don't care how much is in my bank account. They just care how much I did in business and how much expenses and how much sales and profit I did. Um, they're gonna give me a bill based on my profit and then I'm just gonna pay it out of the bank account. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so there's a lot of other features to this, but for most of you, this basic accounting will work just fine. Adding sales, adding expenses, adding categories, um, doing profit and loss, this will get you started on your way and then you can start to learn the more advanced features like um, <clears throat> you know, commissions and subcontractors or adding payroll. A uh, lot of cool stuff you can use here on QuickBooks. I use some of it, but down to its core, this is the basic way that you would use um, QuickBooks Online, Intuit QuickBooks Online. So just you know, add sales and add expenses. Um, if you end up hiring somebody to do some work, like a virtual assistant, that would be under expenses. Pretty much anything you'll spend money on is going to show up under expenses, and then you'll select the right category. It'll be like hired labor, um, subcontractor, shipping materials, office material, furniture, um, tolls, travel. It's all under the expenses. You just got to select the right category. And then at the end of the year, when it's time to file your taxes, you'll bring this screen up and you can um, print this or save this. this. There's ways to export all this information through QuickBooks, which I'll do another video on near the end of the year. Um, and then when the IRS asks you, you know, how much were your shipping charges this year? Well, there you go. It's $267. One click, you can just type that in. IRS is going to say, what were your cost of goods sold? Here we go. It was 17 bucks. So the IRS is going to ask what commissions you had. And there it is, $106. Um, eBay fees, PayPal fees. Now, some people don't agree with putting the PayPal fees into this section. Um, at the end of the year, I think the IRS, when they ask for your commissions and fees, uh, one of the descriptions under it says, did you pay any kind of website fees? like to be a member of a website, to pay commissions or fees to that website owner. And to me, PayPal is a website that I am paying fees to. Uh, they are a, a financial company. They're not a bank, but they're a financial company, uh, which there is a financial section. However, I put them under the fees and I did ask a CPA, I did ask my mom as well who worked in the tax business. Um, and they both said that it absolutely qualifies because it is a website that I am paying fees to. Uh, and really the IRS wouldn't have a problem regardless of which category I put that in. So eBay definitely goes under eBay fees. 
because PayPal is a financial institution-ish kind of business, um, they could go under a website that you paid fees for, or they could go under like some people I think put them under like the banking section. Like, did you pay banking fees? Um, you can definitely ask a CPA about that, but that's where I put them. I put them under the same category as eBay fees. So um, that is Intuit QuickBooks Online in a nutshell. It's very easy. If you have questions, put it down below. Uh, I'm working on getting a link to QuickBooks to try to get you guys a discount. I don't have it yet. Um, if I get one, it will appear in the description box. If it's not down there, I haven't got one. I was hoping to get you guys some kind of discount. Um, I was talking to QuickBooks about it, so maybe I can get one soon. Um, in the meantime, go on there. Like I said, it's like $150 or $155 for the entire year. Very, very affordable. It is an investment in your good accounting and bookkeeping, and I think you'll like it. I think you'll like the app. And also, if you want to auto import things from eBay and PayPal, there are ways to do that through the accounts. Um, I heard that GoDaddy is easier to do that with. I just enjoy doing it manually like this. Uh, I don't really need to import or export. I think it gets confusing and it isn't exactly perfect. I'm gonna be honest. As good as GoDaddy is, it is not perfect. So do your research. You can YouTube and look up some of this stuff. Otherwise, um, if you wanna get QuickBooks, I can help you get set up on it. If you have more questions, I can definitely help you. And in my VIP Facebook group, if you're interested in joining that, we're gonna go over QuickBooks step by step uh, and I'm gonna help anybody who is a part of the VIP group that signs up for QuickBooks get their QuickBooks set up um, any day that they want to get it going. Uh, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone who requested this video. I hope this helps you. I hope this is uh, simplified and makes it easy and gets you started on doing better accounting and bookkeeping. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you next time.